McCluskey, Climate and Communications Coordinator for Summit School District. And I'm here today with School Board President Margaret Carlson and our Superintendent Heidi Pace. And we're talking about Summit School District and the importance of leadership here in our county and the tremendous impact that our system is having on the community. So Margaret, let's talk first of all just about the school board. What is the role of the school board for Summit School District and what are the individual responsibilities for our board members? Sure, um, well let's see, the overall role of the board um, is, uh, it's large <laughs> <laughs> and um, we've got several responsibilities and I will just touch on a few of the bigger ones. Um, and if you were to look into a uh, board handbook, a Board of Education handbook, it would probably list some of the basics being um, uh, policy, mm -hmm. uh, fiscal responsibility, uh, accountability, working with the superintendent. Um, so in terms of policy, what we do is on a regular basis, we um, update and revise policy as necessary. Um, we make sure that our policy is working for our school district and our community and our, and our kids and also that it's compliant with um, what's going on at the state level. Um, we often get uh, updates at, from the state letting us know um, what new policies might look like and usually we'll update our policies to be consistent with those. That's great and I, I like the reference to um, local control, the idea that our school board, while it might take recommendations from the state, really has to think about Summit County and mm -hmm. the community here and what fits our population and our nine schools and how we run those effectively. Um, we have seven school board members. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about what a, you know, a typical week might look like for a school board member. What are some of the things they're doing? Sure, well, um, I think it's a little bit different for each of us. Um, I would say our, really our biggest responsibility um, beyond the policy and, and finance is um, being informed enough to make good decisions when we come to our board meetings. And uh, in order to do that, we just need to be knowledgeable about what goes on in our schools and what's going on in our community and um, what are the needs of our community and the kids in our schools. So we're all out um, in schools um, at community meetings, talking with community members, talking with staff, um, meeting with administrators, um, and, and really finding out um, you know, how we can best serve kids and how we can make informed decisions when we do come to our board meetings. I think that's great. And I, um, thinking about students, which are really at the very heart and center of everything we do in Summit Schools, how, um, tell me about the strategic plan for the district and really what the board sets as the priorities or goals for student learning here in Summit County. Sure, well our strategic plan is something we developed and it has evolved over the years. Our most um, current and recent strategic plan is uh, meant to be um, implemented over the years 2012 through 2015. And it's basically divided into three sections. The first is um, student achievement mm -hmm. and goals based around student achievement, such as graduation rate, um, student growth in learning, um, all of our students being proficient or advanced. Um, and the, the second part of our strategic plan uh, has to do with instruction um, and how do we um, support teachers in supporting students. Our instruction is best practices. Um, how, are we teaching what is the, the Colorado State Standards? Mm -hmm. And we do that in Summit School District through the IB framework. Great. Um, Great. So to make sure that all our, all our teachers are up to date on best practices and have the professional development that they need. Um, uh, making sure that we are being culturally proficient is part of that goal too. Excellent. Um, that's a, that's a, a goal that is um, probably unique to our school district, although it's not unique to um, other districts in the state that we need to be culturally proficient, but it's something we've identified um, as, as a specific goal. And what that means is really just understanding 
where our students are coming from so that uh, they feel comfortable in our buildings and with our teachers and our teachers have an understanding and can make connections with students. As you know, we've got students from all different backgrounds in Summit sure. School District. And in order for them to be successful, they, they need to feel comfortable in their environments also. Oh, that's great. And so there's three segments. You've hit student achievement, you've hit instruction. What's the third part of the strategic plan? That is organizational support, and that pretty much encompasses everything that is needed to make sure that our students are achieving academically and that we are giving the best instruction we possibly can. So that would be um, you know, resources, communications, um, facilities, uh, everything Great. that goes along with that. Great. Um, it sounds like a lot. <laughs> and working in the school district, I think it is. Um, I guess lastly, just on, on talking about the, the board and talking about the strategic plan, you've hit on fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, you know, budget season comes in the spring and goes on into the summer. Are there any specific um, budget priorities or just even talking about the budget process, what we can anticipate for the community, for the county here this next year? Um, well, I can't tell you exactly what uh, we can anticipate because we don't have the dollar numbers yet. Okay. Um, we don't know how much um, extra funding uh, we may have or if we'll stay relatively flat. I think we, uh, the forecast is that we'll stay flat with hopefully just a little more, mm -hmm. um, and which is different than it has been. Last year we had a little more to spend, which was uh, very refreshing. Um, change from the years before that where we were cutting. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and at the in the budget process where we are right now is really just starting to look at priorities. So um, we've had some very preliminary discussions about priorities. Um, the administrators have had some preliminary discussions too, and the board uh, is actually planning to have start our discussions about priorities next week, and we plan on. Um, approaching that in terms of kind of big ideas and themes rather than you know light line items like oh we'd like five more ipads for this classroom right. we would look at the broader theme of technology great like great good example so uh, heidi just talking about the board's role the strategic plan um, the budget process is there anything you would add about how summit school district um, how things run with our school board and, and how that relationship works here in Summit County? Well, it works very well. Um, our school board is uh, highly involved in our schools, so they really do know what's going on. So when we come to the board and we have a decision to make, um, they have um, sufficient background knowledge and they ask great questions um, and take their time in making decisions when that's necessary. And they always have the, at the heart of their decision making what's the best for kids. Um, and Great. what's the best for kids in Summit County. So I think it works very well. Um, we have a very cohesive board. They uh, work collaboratively together. Um, and they do, I think, have a, a genuine pulse on the school district, both from the perspective of employees, as well as um, parents and community members. So. I think that's a great point that our school board has to listen to so many different voices, right. no matter um, whether it's a small or large decision, but that um, representing everyone and trying to be inclusive right. when making decisions, whether it's policy or otherwise. Right. Um, we'll be back in just a moment to talk about the performance of Summit Schools this past year or two and the great progress we're making with student achievement. Hello, I'm Julie McCluskey with Summit School District, here with School Board President Margaret Carlson and our Superintendent Heidi Pace. And we're talking about the school district as a whole, the role we play here in Summit County. And after talking about the governance of Summit School District and the school board's role, um, I think it's important to hit upon performance of our schools and yes. how we're doing, how are students achieving. Um, and a nice place to start might be that discussion about assessments. Mm -hmm. How, um, I think there's a, uh, there's some alphabet soup out there with um, terms like CSAP and TCAP and our, our parents and students know a little bit about what those assessments mean, but maybe for the broader public, Heidi, it would be worth um, a discussion about accountability and what, um, how our students, how we know they're learning, how we know they're growing. Yeah. 
Well, I think there's been a real shift in the state over the last couple of years um, with regard to assessment, and um, we are um, shifting from uh, one set of assessments to another set of assessments, but they're to identify what students are actually learning in school based on the Colorado academic standards. And I think the um, shift is away from a one-time uh, assessment to more ongoing authentic assessments um, and to understand how much students are growing over time um, and more of a look of um, what's the body of evidence to say that our kids are learning as opposed to taking one assessment at one point in time and saying that this is the end result of their learning. So I think it's actually um, a healthy discussion that's going on now and helping us to think through um, what does authentic assessment look like so we can really know where our kids are and so we can adjust our instruction um, oh. right away when we um, are assessing kids along the way and not waiting, for instance, for a spring assessment to say, this is how the kid did and oh, oh, we missed the boat. Um, instead, we're um, adjusting instruction all along the way based on authentic assessment. I think that's pretty powerful and certainly in a classroom um, where a, a test before just gave us a grade yes. or an, uh, you know what the student knew, now we're using that information to go back and reteach, yes. if, if um, I understand that correctly. Mm -hmm. So how does the state use that information to give us feedback or to help guide our work in, in helping students achieve? Yeah. So um, the state uh, grades us, if you will, um, in a variety of areas and um, uh, gives us, I guess in layman's turn, a report card. It's called uh -huh. the school performance framework for each school or the district performance framework for the district. Um, and it grades us on um, academic achievement, so how well did our students perform, um, academic growth, how much are they growing over time, and then closing any gaps we have in achievement with our subgroup population. So um, students who um, might uh, be in our English language learners, mm -hmm. are they performing as well as our other groups and so on. So the expectation is that all of our students perform at high levels, not just certain students, and um, the state disaggregates that information so that we know how well we're performing in each of those areas. And then for secondary schools, it also um, identifies uh, what they call post-secondary uh, post and workforce readiness. And Great. so that looks at our graduation rate, our dropout rate, and our ACT scores, and how well we're doing there. And then it uh, uh, gives us sort of a grade based on all of those things. How are we doing? We are doing so well. <laughs> we, we really, really are. So That's over great. the last three years, um, we have improved every year. Um, and um, we are uh, in the top quartile in the state right now in terms of all schools um, in school district performances. And um, we continue to receive some recognition and awards from the state based on our performance. We've had a couple of schools who have been um, recently recognized um, for the growth that their students have achieved, for instance, and gotten a, a governor's award for that. Um, Outstanding. And, and we don't only look at academic growth. For instance, um, just today we found out that two of our schools have earned the distinction of highly effective libraries oh, um, for the great. state. Yeah, which is a, a great award and, and very coveted and hard to receive. Um, there are very few schools in the state that actually uh, receive that. So we're really excited about the overall um, learning of our kids, not only uh, academics, but how they're growing personally and growing with their character as well. I, I love that, and great to hear that we're doing well. Yes. Um, you talked a couple of times about growth, mm -hmm. and I think that's something um, that important maybe to talk about a little bit more. When we talk about performance, you know, the, the score on an assessment or a, a grade, that's one thing. What is growth and how is it measured for students? What does that really mean? So um, growth looks at how a student does um, over time. So if I'm a student in uh, fourth grade and I take a particular test and this is my score, then I take um, the test the next year um, for my next year's grade. Mm -hmm. um, it looks at how much I've grown, and not only how much I've grown, but how much I've grown against my like peers. So oh. students who have performed like I did in fourth grade, um, I'm then compared to them when I take it in the fifth grade. Um, and so that's how the growth model in Colorado works in, in layman's terms. And so we apparently are doing very well yes, we with student growth, and particularly yes. in a couple of schools. That's exciting to hear. Yeah. 
Um, I know at the state level and certainly nationally, there's a lot of discussion about education reforms. Um, yes. We're in year one of, of the implementation of the Colorado academic standards mm -hmm. um, that are, uh, I think, a little bit um, more robust than the Common Core, but sometimes mm -hmm. referred to that as well. And we're also now in the pilot, the first year of the educator effectiveness work, yes. um, helping to provide good feedback and support to our educators so they can be the very best teachers in the classroom that they can be and our leaders can be the best leaders they can be. What if some of these reforms brought to the school district, both in um, helping us um, support student achievement and then also what you see for the future around these reforms, Heidi? Yeah, I think um, some of the positive things that have come from the reforms, um, let's take the Educator Effectiveness Act, which is really a new evaluation system for teachers. Um, it, like with students, it focuses on growth of teachers and um, growth over time and encouraging teachers to improve um, over time. There's a very detailed rubric um, for teachers to judge their own effectiveness by and to know what is expected of them in the classroom. And then how much their students grow also helps to inform how well that they're, they're doing as well. So um, I think that in general, the mindset from the state has been similar to our mindset and it's about growth. Right. Um, you know, I think of another one of the reforms that um, you didn't mention yet, but the READ Act, yes, um, which really targets early childhood literacy and um, making sure that students can read by third grade. And some of the uh, things that have been implemented with regard to that act have helped us to identify students earlier who might have a reading deficit that we can provide some extra help to. So again, I, I think um, uh, if we implement the reforms in the right way, mm -hmm. uh, they can be very helpful to what we're trying to do as a school district. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, in closing, Margaret, anything that you would add, either from you know, the perspective of school performance and how some schools are doing, or some of these reforms that are now coming into play to help us do even better? Sure, um, I would just say that um, with both of those things, I think Summit has looked for um, meaningful ways to implement those, um, which has not always been the easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we, we haven't just said, yes, we've taken care of that, and yes, we've taken care of that, but I would give a, a lot of credit to Heidi and our administrators and our staff um, in implementing these things so that um, it isn't necessarily more work for everybody, but it's all work that's integrated together. For example, our standards-based grading, um, our standards-based teaching and assessments fits in um, perfectly uh, with the um, growth measurements for the teacher effectiveness. And that's taken quite a bit of work um, yeah. on the part of our administrators and teachers mm -hmm. to make that connection and make that partnership but it really makes sense for teaching, um, and that is, it benefits our kids in the long run. I know that other districts in the state have struggled with that more, and uh, CDE, Colorado Department of Education, has actually reached out to us in Summit to see how we're doing that, how we're bringing those things together um, to make it all a little more streamlined and make sense so that we're not doing more things, but we're doing the things we already do better. That's terrific. And I uh, certainly a shout out to our staff and, and leadership Absolutely. because all of this, you know, the fact that we've been improving for three years straight and our students continue to achieve at such high levels, it really is in thanks to that kind of leadership as well as our tremendous staff. So good note. Um, we'll be back in just a moment to talk about community engagement. Hi, I'm Julie McCluskey. I'm here today with Margaret Carlson, our school board president, and Heidi Pace, our superintendent, talking about Summit School District. We've talked a little bit about our school board, their role, and their responsibilities. We've talked about some tremendous growth and student achievement in Summit Schools. And now we want to talk about our community and how the school board engages with our community, um, solicits input, reaches out, and tries to incorporate uh, the diversity of opinions and voices in some of the decision-making Making that happens at the school district. So Margaret, starting with you, um, I know that the school board has always been committed to listening to key stakeholder groups when making decisions. How is that happening and, and what are some of the things that, um, some of the outreach activities that have been going on to include 
community voice? Sure. Well, um, some of the outreach activities uh, we've been working on, um, like you said, on an ongoing basis. Um, another outreach activity we just really began last year was um, doing some community presentations. Um, we've always gone out and met with community groups um, and brought community groups in and have had joint meetings with the Board of County Commissioners, town councils, and, and other interest groups um, as well. But we've decided to really approach that on a more regular basis now. Um, and, and what we did um, about two years ago, I guess a year and a half ago, we started um, with a, uh, a baseline survey of the community just to kind of gain an understanding of um, what the community knows about the school district and, and, and what they might be more interested in knowing. Our community has been incredibly supportive of the school district and we've been so yes. very fortunate um, to have that here in Summit County. Um, and, and we felt like um, we needed to be reaching out to them on a more regular basis and just kind of updating them on the goings on in the community. And, and we started that last year and, and did maybe 20 to 30 community meetings throughout the year and just went and did a short presentation, um, shared some basic information about the school district with the community groups and then asked um, questions, you know, what would you like to know more about? Um, great. And, and that was a really, uh, a, a really great experience to get out on, on a more regular basis, and we plan to continue to do that. That's great. Um, how has the, um, Heidi, how have the, the community meetings or um, just that connection help inform some of the work going on in the district? Um, well, it's been great. Um, as you know, Summit County is like uh, most school districts across America in that there are uh, many people that live in the community that don't actually have kids in school. Right. So they don't have firsthand knowledge of what's going on. And so to have that direct communication um, with myself and a board member um, and be able to ask any questions that they want and also to find out directly from us, how is our local school district really doing? Um, they have been um, very appreciative, um, the groups that we've met with, um, and have had some great questions. And, and we also wanted to use that opportunity to invite our community in and to let them know that there are ways that people can get involved in the school district if they aren't currently involved, um, ways that they could either volunteer their time or their talents or learn more about an individual school and so on. And um, some of our uh, community folks didn't know that they could get involved. And you know, one result is not necessarily directly from this, but um, part of this is that uh, we have a reading buddy program with community members um, where they come in and they read in our local schools. Great. That program has doubled over the year, over the last year, wow. um, with volunteers. And um, in fact, we have so many volunteers that we've spread it out to more schools now this year. So that's just one example of ways that our community can get involved and that they have gotten involved over the last year. I, that's great to hear, and I yeah. think Summit County has such a reputation for being so collaborative and so um, uh, youth focused. We have a great um, and, and tremendous welling of support for the kids here. So it's nice to hear more adults are getting involved. Um, I know, Margaret, the school board members all participate in different committees, um, yes. whether that's internally for the school district or in the community. What are some of those groups um, that the school board members are um, joining and then um, helping to kind of bridge? some of the communications or some of the work locally? Sure, well we each um, take on a few committees or groups um, as part of our role as a school board member and uh, most of us go beyond that even and um, are very active in the community so um, and, and beyond our local community too. Um, for example, Allison Casillas is with the um, Early Childhood Option. She's very involved in that group. Uh, Jay Kent, McCose. Uh, sits on the FERC board, I believe. Um, FERC is the Family Intercultural and Resource Center? Yes. Thanks. Yeah, FERC. Um, and, um, sorry, who else? Oh, uh, uh, Dave Miller uh, has been involved in um, the formation of an education foundation and the work they're great. doing to support our schools, which is really great. Um, Aaron Young has... Uh, just recently been appointed to the Colorado Asso Association of School Board 
board of directors. So okay. she's getting lots of information at the state level. Uh, we've got Sue Wilcox, who has been involved with the Colorado Children's Campaign. Um, Marilyn Taylor is one of our newer board members, and um, she uh, has a great educational background and has gotten involved locally on many of our committees um, and is very knowledgeable about our cultural proficiency goal. And um, recently, also, I've been appointed to um, the Governor's Education Leadership Council, um, which is uh, very exciting because I get to sit at the table um, with leaders in education in our state mm -hmm. and um, hear right from the source what the plans are and, and hear the discussions for the future and uh, that's a really exciting place to be too. Yes, and so. congratulations. We're so proud that you're a part of that group and certainly representing Summit County and the interests here in some of the um, state yes. education policy making and, and what's happening across the state. So. Um, I know that there are a couple of examples Heidi, of um, how we have reached out to the community to try and um, gain input, gather their opinions. I think um, uh, school calendar, that's a great process we go through every few years to just talk about what we're doing. And there are certainly other examples. Um, what would you say about the value of community input, community engagement in um, just our process and, and um, what you would want the community to know mm -hmm. about their input and how we're, mm -hmm. we're trying to consider that? Yeah, well, what I'd want them to know is that their voice does matter. Um, and that um, we are always open to hearing more from the community and other ways that we can engage. Um, as Margaret said, you know, we went out to the community last year um, and we do have some internal uh, community groups that have been meeting. So Calendar was the example that you brought up. We just completed that process with a, a large group, 19 people and very diverse opinions and, and yet we're able to come to consensus with everyone. Um, another way, because we can't always bring everybody in and, and not uh, people aren't always available, um, we try to do periodic surveys out to the community on specific topics to, to find out what they're thinking and what they're feeling. Um, about where we are and where we should head. Um, and um, as you know, we read every single one yeah. of those comments and yep. we do take them into consideration and share that information with the board um, and use it as part of our decision making process. So, you know, this isn't my school district or uh, Margaret's school district. This is the school district for all of Summit County and we want all of our stakeholders highly involved in the decision making here. Oh, that's great. And certainly I think what one of our strengths is that um, energy to incorporate the feedback and recognize it as we make decisions and, and, and inform our programs and our yes. policies, et cetera. Any final thoughts from either one of you just about community engagement, the school district, next steps? Well, I'll, I'll go ahead. <laughs> okay. um, I, I guess I just want to highlight, um, and Margaret brought it up before, but uh, we have just the uh, most professional and um, student-focused staff that it's ever been my privilege to work with. And um, we have great kids and community members here. I know when I was first um, visiting this school district before I was working here and was walking through the schools, one of my comments was um, I couldn't believe the, the um, maturity of the students, the positive character that I, that I saw um, passing them in the hallway and being greeted by them. And, um, we have great kids, great families, and just stellar staff. So uh, I'm not surprised at all that we've been improving over the last three years, and I have no doubt whatsoever that um, we will continue to improve over the next few years. So it's just a great place to be. Oh, so nice to hear you say. That's yeah. great. Margaret, any <laughs> final thoughts? Um, I, I would just echo what Heidi said. It truly is a group effort yeah. um, between staff, parents, community members, students, of course. Um, and uh, we do a lot of uh, hard work in the school district, but it is the good work. At, at the end of the day, I, I do believe that every, everything we do really is student-based and student-focused and with the best interests, interests of kids in mind. 
Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. For more information on Summit School District, please visit our website or feel free to give us a call. Um, we welcome your contact, questions, thoughts, and opinions. Thank you.